Hi, welcome to our time of worship from St Marian's Church in Stonehouse. My name is Stuart and it's my privilege to be the minister here. Today in our service, John Hamilton reads for us from Mark's Gospel. The man with an unclean spirit. They went to Capernaum and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit convulsing and crying with a loud voice came out of him. They were all amazed. And they kept on asking one another, What is this? Are you teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. Good morning. I hope you're well and staying safe this Sunday morning. The lectionary has us with the Gospel of Mark this epiphany season. It's a short gospel, only 20 or so pages long but how he packs it in. You could say it's the smartest gospel. There's no long discourses like John and it has a pressing immediacy. We've been talking about the readings in the prayer group and it's helped me to see that Mark is the gospel for this time in 2021, during this pandemic, right now. Let me expand on that statement. Why is Mark's gospel for this time? I hear you asking. At a time that's so testing for all of us, the most testing of my lifetime. You may have asked yourself, where is God in all of this? I bet you've been a little disgruntled with him. I have a friend who always counters um, this negativity by reminding us that God is right there in the middle of it with us. Mark's Gospel begins quite simply in chapter 1, verse 1. The beginning of the good news about Jesus, the Messiah. Direct and clear and to the point. Unlike the other Gospels, there's no angels or shepherds or childhood memories. Jesus is declared the Messiah and presented as a fully grown man, baptised and ready to teach a good news story. Of course, we always need a good news story, especially now. Mark then continues, and Jesus meets John the Baptist, who baptises him. Jesus is claimed and loved and named as God's beloved, first, before he embarks on anything in his adult life. Mark continues at a pace, with Jesus quickly proclaiming the kingdom of God and forming a group of disciples, as we heard last week, and now embarking on a ministry of teaching, healing, exorcisms. And we're still only in chapter 1, verses 21 to 28, as we heard in today's reading. This is why Mark appeals to me, especially now. There's no messing around. And isn't this what we want from our leaders at this time? Isn't this what we want from ourselves at this time? Get to the point quickly and succinctly. Get the information to the people. Get the vaccines out quickly. Form groups of experts and pool our resources for the good of humanity. In today's reading, we get to one of the real messages from Mark. Jesus starts his teaching in the synagogue, which is primarily for teaching scriptures, prayer, and the exposition of scriptures. There was no music or singing or sacrifices. I think it must have been a tense atmosphere in the synagogue that day in Capernaum. Jesus starts his teaching and we read, people were amazed because he taught them as one who had authority. Listen to that again as one who had authority. He had a message. He was like a new revelation to the people. He didn't speak to them like the scribes did. Jesus' teaching style issues a challenge to the scribes, 
because he interprets the law and speaks on behalf of God without engaging in the back talk about tradition as the scribes would do. Nowadays, we might see that as cutting out the legal jargon and speaking plainly. He spoke with personal authority. What does that mean? I've been thinking about this and it struck me that we see this every day now. Experts and scientists talking and giving advice more than we've ever seen in the past. Talking passionately about their subject and working together across countries without the filters of politicians and having the strength of character and professionalism to talk truth to power and mostly succeeding. As I said before, God is right in the middle of this guiding these experts' hands and minds for the benefit of humanity. How much more like Jesus' teaching can this be, like we've seen in Mark? Jesus speaks with personal authority, and the people like it. He didn't need any further authority because he was speaking directly from God. It was refreshing for the people to hear him speak like that. His positivity was the complete opposite of the careful quotations of the scribes learned by heart and handed down from generation to generation. When he addresses the impure spirit in the man, he talks directly and with authority. Be quiet, says Jesus sternly. Come out of him. No need for secret incantations or long prayers or props, just commands. He means business. And that's the Jesus people wanted to see. And that's the Jesus we want to hear now. Jesus denies the unclean spirit the capability of settling into the man's mind and bones, so stripping it of its polluting influence. It doesn't eliminate all evil and depression from the world, but it denies corrupting forces the power to hold sway on people's lives. I, like millions of people around the world, watched the inauguration in the United States and shed tears of relief and hope. But the person who stole the show was a young black poet who spoke with such personal authority it was truly inspiring. Amanda Gorman had overcome a speech impediment and was inspired by the poet Maya Angelou and the musical Hamilton. She researched the speech and she read every speech from previous inaugurations to get a feel for the occasion and she went above and beyond the occasion. Like my friend says, God is right in the middle of it all. But this is our story also. People were changed by Jesus' teaching as we should be reading Mark's Gospel today. Read the Gospel and be changed as they were. It's the shortest, smartest, coolest gospel that goes at a pace. And that's why I think it's the gospel for this time, for now. Let it grab your attention and know that God's love for us all. And we'll go forward with a little bit more personal authority than before. I pray you all stay well, stay safe and stay blessed. Healing God. Our world needs your gentle healing touch today. As COVID-19 continues to spread and cause chaos for billions of people, we need your gentle healing touch for all who are trying to manufacture and distribute the vaccines, for all who serve on the frontline medical services going the extra mile, for all who are helping our young people to stay in education and teaching from home, for all who are delivering from shops to those isolated and infirm. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As our country continues to be in lockdown, we need your gentle healing touch for all those elected to serve in government who have difficult decisions to make, for all the advisors and specialists who need wisdom, insight, dedication and patience, for those serving in local food banks, helping families on the edge, and for all those who provide service in so many ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As our brothers and sisters suffer from illness and anxiety, we need your gentle healing touch for all who are unable to access health care, for all who have had to wait for investigations or treatments, for those enduring chemotherapy, 
for all who have been isolated from loved ones, and for all who have faced death alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our hearts, we name those people and situations known to us where your gentle healing touch is needed today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you for listening to our endless requests, O Lord. Give us patience to wait for answers and courage to be the answer where we can. In the name of Christ the Healer, we pray in the words that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever. Amen. This story that we read today from Mark's Gospel is the first act of Jesus' ministry, an exorcism. I've been doing this for a while now and I'm still waiting on my first one of those and I'm more than happy to continue to wait for a very long time. But true to Mark's style, every word is important. Jesus goes to the synagogue on the Sabbath. There's nothing unusual about that, except that they're in that place where people go to to worship God Jesus encounters a man possessed by an unclean spirit. And that unclean spirit recognises Jesus. What, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. There's so much going on here, it's hard to know where to start. But let's begin with the personal. Have you ever had an earworm? You know, that, a song that gets stuck in your head and it, it just won't go away. It's annoying, isn't it? If something so silly and meaningless can get stuck in your head, then imagine what it's like when something more sinister gets in there and just won't go away. Possession isn't like in the horror movies. It's what I think we might recognise now as addiction 
or obsessive thinking. It's an idea that takes over. This man is in the synagogue. He's among his friends and neighbours. He's there at a time when he's supposed to be worshipping God, but his mind is elsewhere, stuck on whatever desire or obsession fills his mind. These unclean spirits, even the big ones, can be hard for other people to see. People with addiction, gambling, alcohol, drugs, sex, power, that people struggle with these but manage to operate pretty well without most people ever knowing. But when someone challenges you, suggests that it might be an issue, then the reaction can be pretty strong. Jesus' reaction to this is straightforward. Come out, leave him alone. It's a healing, the end of the man's torment, the triumph of God over evil. But like most of Mark's gospel, this is a bit more than one man's problems. Here, right in the heart of this religious country, in the very place and at the very time when God is supposed to be first in people's thoughts, Jesus encounters an unclean spirit. This is the story of Israel. The religious authorities collude with the Romans and with their own local leaders to maintain their own status and power. The people are distracted from God by all the things that still distract us. Worry, self-reliance, pride, arrogance, fear. For the rest of Mark's Gospel, Jesus will battle with all of that. He'll stand up against all the things that possess people's minds. Power and corruption and greed and ambition and fear and domination. Mark sums all of it up in the idea of empire. A whole system created to keep people in line, to direct their thoughts away from the problems by providing small distractions. The Romans called it bread and circuses. Make sure the people have just enough to eat to keep them working hard. And when times get tough and they start to complain, you give them entertainment, some kind of spectacle to distract them. Add into that idea some threat from outsiders and you have a pretty heady mix that's hard to resist, especially when there's severe punishment for not towing the line. But it's all a lie. A great big illusion. And it's an idea that possesses us so much so that we can't imagine another way, even though we know it's not quite right. Those are the things that take us away from God and that's what Jesus stands in opposition to. We still see it. You set up practices that replace the actual thing. So you wash your hands, but you're never really clean, not on the inside. You join in the singing, but you never really praise God. You close your eyes, but never really pray. Or you call it NHS Track and Trace, but it's run by a private company. Perhaps the others at the synagogue when Jesus arrives don't even notice the unclean spirit because they all have the same issues. They've all bought into the same lies. Nobody can see the problem until someone so different, so outside of that system comes along that, well, Jesus doesn't even need to point out the problem. As soon as they see it, they know how it should be. I think we all have a bit of that. We know. We know the things that get in the way of God. And we are in our own way possessed by those things because we can't or won't stop. But it doesn't have to be like this. The good news is that Jesus has authority over it all. We're not alone. We are never alone, even when things seem at their darkest. Even when things seem hopeless. Even when it's all too much. God is there. With us, in us. Loving us. Today we have listened. And now we go to act. We go to listen to others, we go to love others, we go to be a blessing to others and we do all of these things in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.